Welcome to On the Scene Sports. I'm your host, Andrew Rosario. We're coming to you from the Grand Hyatt in Manhattan, where tonight is the 24th annual Arthur Ashe Foundation Dinner. We will introduce you to the host and the co-host, as well as all of the honorees. We're looking forward to a great evening. Dr. Marilyn Frazier is the CEO of the Arthur Ashe Foundation. Congratulations on another year. Talk to me about what's happened in the past year. Oh wow, so much has happened. We recently received um, a grant to do some more work with our students, so our high school students, as so our summer internship program, as well as the other program that we are doing with students in high school. And this is to increase minority representation in the health profession. And how many students are involved in the program? So right now we have about 160 students. So we have um, students in each one of the grades, 10 through 12. Okay. But the program has um, had over 1,200 students over its time. Talk to me about some of the challenges that you're faced with on a year-to-year -year basis. Year-to-year -year basis, the one that rises to the top, of course, is funding, because we do a lot of wonderful work right. and making sure that that work is funded so we can continue it. Uh, also, making sure that we disseminate results from our work and publish the work that other people know about it. One of the things that we've always said is that the Arthur Ashe Institute is one of the best kept secrets, and we don't want that to be, you know, we want to make sure that others know about it. Part of tonight's festivities includes silent auctions, good food, good music, but the best part, at the end of the evening, all participants get a pair of sneakers. Melvin's today's show anchor. Welcome, congratulations. And the Thank most you. the most important question is, how's your tennis game? <laughs> it's not existent. Okay. It's not existent, but I was a huge Arthur Ashe fan, so uh, but no. In fact, I can I can I'll tell you this. I've never actually played a full game of tennis. My wife and I, on our honeymoon, we took some lessons, okay. but I've never played tennis. But I love the cause, I love Arthur Ashe, so. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about tonight's cause and yeah. Arthur Ashe and what he meant to you. Well, you know, for, for me to uh, stay out this late, considering what time I have to get up early, right. I've gotta be pretty passionate right. about the cause, right? right. Um, Arthur Ashe started this foundation just before he died mm -hmm. because it was important to him that, that people who look like me and you, uh, who are underrepresented in, in medicine, uh, that they became more represented. And, and also folks who were struggling with HIV. Uh, and we, you know, his death from complications of HIV. It was important that, uh, that he do something about that, even as he was struggling with the disease himself. So at a young age, I remember being inspired by his bravery, by his courage. So to, to be a part of an event that also honors and recognizes that, it's a no brainer. If one message you want to impart tonight about not only the event, but about Arthur himself, what would that be? Uh, he was a guy that, that, that used his voice to advance a cause. Everyone doesn't do that, uh, but, but it was very important that he do that. I think there should be more of that. Z Zarniak is also co-hosting tonight's event along with Craig Melvin. You're with CNN Bleacher Report. Talk to me about this night and what it means to you. It's so awesome. I mean, this group, this whole program is awesome. It's something that we've heard about for years. So when they asked us to do this, it, first of all, it was kind of a shock, right? Um, no, but it's amazing. I mean, the things that Arthur Ashe did right before he passed, his initiative to make the awareness and also give giving kids, I don't want to say kids, you know, college students, whatever, older, right. the opportunity to really learn about this, this health organizations and things like that, I think is huge. Um, it makes such a difference in the community, and you can see it really in this New York area. How much did you know about Arthur Ashe before the foundation? Man, you know, I mean, I knew a good bit because my father was a sports journalist okay. for USA Today, so okay. growing up, I always paid attention to it, so of course I knew about his legend. Um, I think I gained more of an appreciation once I got into journalism and was covering sports on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Because then you look at the pioneer he was, and it's like, and even reading through the scripts that we're working with tonight, I mean, you're like, wow, the things that he accomplished, obviously, on the court, but then this whole side of what he did, philanthropy off of it, is really remarkable. Talk about his legacy, the foundation, and what he was like when he wasn't playing tennis. Well, he's a... Uh one of the best friends I ever had. And he was a magnificent human being. Uh, I, uh, he had several memorials when he died. And I remember speaking at one, and I said he's a credit to his race. 
the human race. Fox 5's meteorologist Mike Woods has attended this event in the past, sure but have. this year you're an honoree. Congratulations. Thank you very much. When you first found out you were being honored, what came to mind? Well, you know, I, I was always happy to be a part of sports ball, the event itself, because I, I love the message. I love that they were getting out there and spreading the word. You know, health issues that, you know, just we don't talk about in many, many instances. And then all of a sudden something came to me. Mm -hmm. And I knew when I was, you know, presented with this challenge dealing with prostate cancer, it was my opportunity to help raise the voice and, and really raise awareness and hopefully get folks to really look after themselves and take care of business and, before it becomes too late. And you went ahead and died, you went on, on your program right. and announced that, you know, that right. you had um, come down with prostate cancer. I, yes. Um, just talk about the battle that you had to go through emotionally, mentally. Well, you know, it was very difficult. I did anticipate that I would at some point uh, come down with prostate cancer. There was a good chance. There's a very strong family history that I okay. have. Okay. My grandfather, my father, my uncle, cousin. It's a, it's a very, uh, it, it looked like that was going to happen at some point. Now, for them, it didn't happen until closer to 60. For me, I had just turned 50. So to get the news was a surprise and a shock. So that kind of set me back right away. But then I realized there were so many advancements with uh, with health and all the different treatment options and so on. Mm -hmm. So I went into it with a very positive uh, outlook and had a nice team behind me and away I went. But once I uh, really started looking into what it was take, what it took to uh, deal with this, I realized how much I actually didn't know. Okay. And for someone who has a background in uh, prostate cancer and having dealt with it with uh, my family, mm -hmm. I was kind of surprised at myself that I didn't know. Mm -hmm you know, what I really should have known ahead of time. So now I have a really solid, you know, education on this, and I think I need to help really get the word out there. Bill Evans, Tamsin Fidel is here tonight to join the festivities. Yes, Tell me wow. about how excited you are. Uh, you know, this is great. A anytime you see people come out to an organization and come together, especially when we're talking about health education and we're talking about helping our community, it's so important. We do so much uh, for other areas, but right here at home is who we need to help, especially with an organization like Arthur Ashe Institute uh, for Health. And a lot of folks remember him as a tennis player first, the first African-American to win a major Grand Slam tournament. But then the unfortunate news about him passing away from AIDS. But two months before, he started this foundation, and it's thriving. This is his 24th year. Well, that's the incredible part of it, because he was only part of it for such a short time, but his legacy has really lived on and helped so many people. And sadly, he's not with us anymore, but you kind of feel like he is when you hear people go up there and talk tonight. So it's a really, really special night for them. Billy Bond is the founder of Black Girls Rock. First of all, congratulations on your honor tonight. Thank you so much. It's, honor, it's an honor to be here, and honestly, just to be um, given an award in the name of of Arthur Ashe is incredible for me. And when you found out that you were being honored, what was your reaction? Um, well, two reactions. One, I was just like, are you sure? <laughs> no, but I almost um, my, my earring. Um, but I, I, I was just really humbled um, and just really kind of recognizing that my work um, reaches beyond um, I guess what I saw, mm -hmm. you know, and it's really about the humanitarianism of the work, you know, and in the other part was the cool thing, you could to wear sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what have you been up to lately? What projects are you working on? What can we look forward to? Oh my God, so much. Um, just really scaling everything that I'm doing. I'm working on Black Girls Rock Africa. I'm continuing all the other work that I'm doing. Just lots of stuff. It's so much, but it's good stuff. If there's one message that you want to impart to people about not only the Arthur Ashe Institute, the foundation, and what it means to them in the community, what would that be? I mean, I think that their focus on health is really important, and the focus on our physical health, our spiritual health, and our mental health, I think all of those things combined um, matter, and we should all be working on that collectively. And the Tracy Wilson is a professor at SUNY Downs State is also another honoree tonight. First of all, congratulations. Thank you so much. Talk to me about what your role is at the hospital and how it impacts with the Arthur Ashe Foundation. Sure. I'm a professor of public health at SUNY Downstate, and I've had the privilege of working with the Arthur Ashe Institute for about 12 years now uh, to collaborate on community-engaged projects to reduce the burden of chronic diseases, primarily HIV. Um, recently, we completed the Barbershop Talk with Brothers Project, which was focused in high HIV risk neighborhoods in Brooklyn. Um, and it was successful and um, a great 
um, a great project for engaging with um, the neighborhoods in Brooklyn most severely affected. And tell me some of the biggest challenges that you and your group face. Most of the challenges around HIV infection are on under-resourced under -resourced communities, communities who are not getting the education that are needed. Um, and the Arthur Ashe Institute has a well-established um, model of using community engagement and reaching people where they're at. So if people are not coming into clinics for care, Arthur Ashe Institute will go out to them. And so it's a really wonderful model uh, that's been successful in a, many areas. Here, the Institute honors individuals and organizations that are making significant contributions to urban communities in the areas of health, education, medical research, community service, and philanthropy. I'm your host, Andrew Rosario. We're coming to you from the Grand Hyatt in Manhattan, where tonight is the 24th annual Arthur Ashe Foundation Dinner.